In this video, we'll look at some examples of equations that we can solve using undetermined coefficients and look into how we go about picking the right guess for the right-hand side of the equation. Look at the example here. We have y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y equals 5 cosine of 2t. So we want to break this into two parts. The first is solving the homogeneous part, and we want to solve the non-homogeneous part. For the homogeneous part, we have y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y equals 0. If we look at the characteristic equation, this will be r squared plus 4r plus 4 equals 0, which is r plus 2 quantity squared with a double root at negative 2, which means our general solution here will be y of t is c1 e to the minus 2t plus c2 times t e to the minus 2t because it's a repeated root of that equation. And we'll store this for now. Now I want to deal with the non-homogeneous part. So we've got a 5 cosine of 2t over here. So when we had exponentials, we just guessed the normal exponential itself. So our guess definitely wants to include a cosine of 2t, because derivative of that will still look like a cosine of 2t or a sine of 2t, and we can plug it in and see what happens. But if we plug it in, we're going to run into a problem, and we'll see what that looks like. So if I take two derivatives of this, I can try to plug that into my equation and see what happens. If I do, I will get that I want second derivative plus four times the first derivative plus four y equal five cosine of two t. And if I plug that in, I will see a negative four a cosine of two t minus an eight a sine of two t plus a four a cosine of two t equals five cosine of two t. These two terms will cancel and now I have a problem because I have a term that has a sine of 2t on it matching a term that has a cosine of 2t, and those are not equal for all t. There's no way to pick a to make this work. So what do we do? Well, we think back to why exponentials worked so nice. Exponentials were great because every derivative was still an exponential function of the same in argument, so it all worked out nice with derivatives. But in this case, if I differentiate cosine, I get to sine, and then sine is back to cosine. So what I have to do is I have to actually include both the cosine and the sine term with the same argument. So I need to include a second term here of a b sine of 2t. And that's going to allow me to sort of take care of the fact that I have a sine over here and a cosine over here and make things balance out better. So I can now take the true derivatives of that part of the function and then plug all of this into my equation here. And if we do that, I will get the second derivative plus four times the first derivative, plus four times the function, and I want this to match five cosine of two t. We'll see actually the cosine cancels this cosine, and this sine cancels out with this term here, when I distribute the four through. What I'll be left with here is that I need negative eight a sine of two t, same thing we got before, plus eight b cosine of two t, needs to match 5 cosine of 2t. Then to make this work, what I want to do is match up the terms that have the same function attached to them. So I will want the negative 8a from this to equal 0 because there's no sine term over here, and I'll want this 8b to match 5. So I want minus 8a equals 0 and 8b equals 5. So I get a is 0 and b is 5 eighths. There, for a particular solution that I get, this y p of t is going to be 5 eighths sine of 2t. Note that even though I start with a cosine of my original function, it, the sine ends up being the part that's in my actual answer. So with that, I can combine that with my general solution from the homogeneous equation to give me a full general solution as y of t is c1 e to the minus 2t plus c2 t to the minus 2t, plus this yp part, 5 eighths sine of 2t. And that would give me a general solution if I wanted to set up initial conditions. I could do that now with this full function here to figure out what c1 and c2 have to be to meet those initial conditions. Let's now look at a second example of a similar type. So we've got y double prime minus 2y prime minus 8y equals 2e to the 4t, y of 1 equals 0, y prime is 0 equals 3, so we'll also work out the initial condition part of this one as well. So for the homogeneous part, we have a characteristic equation that is r squared minus 2r minus 8 equals 0. This factors as r minus 4r plus 2. So my general solution here 
is going to be y of t is c1 e to the 4t plus c2 e to the minus 2t. Now for the non-homogeneous part, we have a 2 e to the 4t on the right-hand side. So based on our normal approach, our guess should be y p of t is a e to the 4t and see what happens. With this, we have that y prime is 4a e to the 4t and y p double prime is 16 a e to the 4t. And we can plug that in to get that we get 16a e to the 4t minus 2 times 4a e to the 4t minus 8a e to the 4t should match with 2e to the 4t. But if I look at this left hand side here, this is just 0. And that's a problem, because that's not true. And you probably could have spotted this a little bit earlier to see that I was going to plug in a e to the 4t, but c1 e to the 4t already solved the homogeneous problem. So there was no chance I could use this to solve a non-homogeneous problem because it already solves the homogeneous part. How do we fix this? We do the same thing we did for repeated roots. We multiply by t. So in that case, we instead want to take our guess to be a t e to the 4t. And the point is, all the terms of the form t e to the 4t will all vanish because e to the 4t solves the homogeneous problem. And we'll see that with the calculations. So if we take that guess, we have the first derivative is going to be an a e to the 4t plus a 4a t e to the 4t. And the second derivative is going to be 4a e to the 4t plus a 4a e to the 4t plus a 16a t e to the 4t. And these combine to make 8a e to the 4t. Then I can plug this into my equation. I get the second derivative minus twice the first derivative minus 8 times the function itself. And I want this to equal 2e to the 4t. So if I look here, I have 16a t e to the 4t minus 8 minus 8, those all cancel out. And here I have 8a e to the 4t minus 2a e to the 4t. So I'm left with 6a e to the 4t equals 2e to the 4t, meaning I can solve for a to get that a is 1 third. So with that, I can get my general solution to this problem, which is y of t is my homogeneous part, c1 e to the 4t plus c2 e to the minus 2t, and then plus this last part, 1 third t e to the 4t. Now that's the general solution part. We also had initial conditions, y of 0 equals 1 and y prime of 0 equals 3 that we want to solve for. Now we have to take this expression here already having found the non-homogeneous part, make this work. If we ignore this part, solve this one to two and then plug this in, it's not gonna work out correctly. So we have to include this when we're doing this part of the process. Let's take y prime to start. So y prime for this function y here is a four c one e to the four t minus two c two e to the minus two t plus a one third e to the four t plus a four thirds t e to the four t. And now I'm gonna plug in zero to both equations. So for the function itself, I will have one for y of zero equaling c1 plus c2 plus zero because that t makes it all go away. And for y prime at zero, I will get three equaling four c1 minus two c2 plus one third. And if you ignored this term the whole time, you would not get this one third and maybe a different answer to the problem. So I'm going to double the first equation and then add them together to get rid of the c2 terms. If I do that, I will get that 5 equals 6c1 plus 1 third. This will be 14 thirds equaling 6c1. So c1 is 14 over 18 or 7 over 9. And then since c1 plus c2 is 1, that then tells me that c2 must be 2 ninths. Now I can write the actual solution to the initial value problem by incorporating these two constants. So solution to the IVP is... C1 is 7 ninths e to the 4t plus C2, 2 ninths e to the minus 2t, and then plus our 1 third t e to the 4t. 
So that's how you set up and solve these different initial value problems, as well as the different tweaks that you'll need to make when certain things don't work out so perfectly for using undetermined coefficients.